The Sony PVM A250 OLED monitor has been discontinued since 2019. Since then, there have been many onset monitors that have been released, but no monitor comes close to the A250 as far as value per dollar, even with all its flaws. The main monitor on my DIT color grading card is an LG C1 OLED, but I would never go to a jaw without my trusty discontinued Sony PVM A250 OLED, which from here on out I will refer to as the A250. As a digital imaging technician, it is my job to guarantee the integrity of the onset image pipeline, and that integrity begins with my gear. Every day when I come to set, no matter if it's for a full-time show, a commercial with a new cinematographer, or a Sunday freebie project, I need to make sure my gear pulls its weight. I also need to make sure my gear is replaceable and replicable. If I hire a second unit DIT, I can guarantee I can get a Sony A250 monitor from whatever rental house we're using in town. Or if unfortunately I were to drop the monitor off the tailgate of the camera truck, I could get a new A250 to set in less than two hours. Unfortunately, this can't be said about other monitors that we'll talk about later in this video. I need to know that when I plug in any piece of my gear, it'll power on, it'll work as spec, and it'll function as safely on my cart on a stage as it does riding through the desert on a process trailer. The Sony A250 is a monitor that I know will pull its weight every time, no matter the circumstance. It's a very simple monitor with two 3G SCI inputs, a single HDMI input, and one of the world's worst speakers ever produced. Why does it even have a speaker? Who knows? It originally retailed for $5,500, and even today, nearly five years after being discontinued, these monitors on the used market with low hours still sell for about the same price. The Sony A250 hit the market in early 2014. This was an important time as a majority of productions in Hollywood had switched over to a digital sensor and thus needed a monitor they could trust. The Sony A250 is a very basic monitor and does have a rather large amount of setbacks. For myself, one of the biggest setbacks is it does not accept DC power directly. Unlike its steroid brother from Flanders, the DM250, the Sony will only accept AC ground power. In my experience, when I do need to run my Sony monitor off of a battery or off of any other DC power supply, I found the high quality pure sine wave inverters to work flawlessly but having to carry around an inverter compared to being able to plug in a four pin XLR directly into the monitor is a hassle. That's one more thing to pack for the job, or maybe more realistically, one more thing to forget. The second biggest issue with the Sony A250 is in regards to the calibration. Every new monitor today can be calibrated with a color probe and a custom 3D LUT that can be created and placed into the internal memory of the monitor. This brings a level of color accuracy to set that we've only dreamed about years ago. You can even do this with my LG C1 OLED that I use as my daily DIT monitor. See the description to explore our deep dive on the C1 on set. When it comes to the Sony A250, to adjust and calibrate, unfortunately, it's rather limited. You are only able to adjust the color temperature, color space, gamma, gain, and bias manually. The typical process to color calibrate a Sony A250 is to plug it in for 30 minutes and let it warm up. From there, you feed it a signal via your pattern generator and use a colorometer to dial in the colors. From there, if you want to be even more accurate, you could take a LUT box and put that between the source video and the SDI input on the back of the monitor and perform a calibration with a calibration software such as Kalman. In a sense, this mimics the Flanders $25,000 DM250 monitor, but at a cheaper price. But once again, just like the power inverter, that LUT box is another item to break, or maybe more importantly, another item to forget. Next up is the OS. For all intent and purposes, these monitors don't have an OS, they have a menu system. Luckily though, in 2017, with the update to the firmware 2.0, Sony did include a very helpful feature, which is false color. This is one of the first professional monitors in the industry to have false color built in outside of Flanders, of course. Unfortunately, with Sony's false color, there were no adjustments. What Sony sets for the different colors that represent the different IRE exposures is baked in. But even so, I know that working with many cinematographers, this feature is a big plus. To be able to program false color and the false color scale to the front buttons has a massive benefit when shooting outside or without a DIT. So with all these issues and lacking features of the Sony A250 monitor, why do you still find it in so many DIT tents and so many coloring suites nearly five years after it was discontinued? Well, 
That comes down to reliability. I worked with some Sony A250 monitors that had over 20,000 hours on them. For reference, I joined the International Cinematographers Guild in 2015, and I have worked 13,000 hours on union shows. The Sony A250 was released in early 2014, and some have over 20,000 hours on them and still work flawlessly. I guess the biggest difference is I'm burned out and they're burned in. You're welcome. Now to address the big elephant in the room, the OLED color gray monitors that should have the crown today is the line of OLED monitors that Small HD is currently producing. This would be the 22 inch and the 27 inch priced at $10,000 and $12,000 respectively. While this is a massive amount of money for a monitor, this is on par with industry pricing. A lot of people, including myself, love Small HD, not necessarily because of the quality of the hardware, but because of the software that's included. No one in the industry can touch Small HD's page OS, but as nice as a software may be, what's more important than the software is the reliability of the product. And even more important, what happens when there's an issue with that product. To demonstrate this, it is 2 p.m. here in Southern California on a Monday, and I'll be calling Small HD to request support on my Small HD 702 touch monitor that I use to film these videos. Next, I'll be calling Sony to request support on my Sony A250 monitor that's been discontinued for five years. Thank you for calling Creative Solutions Los Angeles. Thank you for calling Sony Digital Media Production Center. Upon calling Sony professional support, I was able to talk to a representative within 90 seconds of dialing the phone number. Thank you for calling Sony Professional Products Support. How can I help you today? Hi, I have a Sony uh, PV. With Small HD, there was no one able to answer my call, so I left a voicemail. Even though Creative Solution is Small HD Support Center here in Los Angeles, I thought it was only fair to give them extra time as the company itself is based on the East Coast. It's been over 48 hours since leaving that message, and I have yet to hear back. We are sorry. There is no one available to take your call. Please record your message after the tone. As a digital imaging technician, and along with many other technical crafts in the film industry, your reputation for a large part is based on the reliability of your equipment. And when you use a product for 12 hours a day, 70 hours a week, it needs to work every time and at all times. It doesn't matter what the specs are of the product or how great the new features of the operating system are, if it's not reliable, and more importantly, doesn't have tech support. This is why for myself, a Sony A250, or in my dreams, a Flanders DM250, which are both discontinued, will continue to be the monitors that I can trust. They carry the guarantee of quality that I can only hope gets associated with my name. If I'm paying $12,000 per monitor, and on most sets I have two or three monitors, am I asking too much for there to be a support number with a technician who I can reach out to during business hours, instead of leaving a message and hoping for a call back? For that same cost, I can buy a brand new Honda Civic. Just think about that. When it comes to technology in the high-end cinema world, we are starting to see a concentration. There is very little competition. This includes professional monitors, wireless video, and even on-set color programs. But the good news is there are small companies slowly breaking in. The first comes to mind is a newer company called Porkeys. They create small on-camera monitors that oftentimes include camera control at a fraction of the price compared to the competition. I'm excited to see what happens to these companies as they begin to grow and as the technology matures. We're reaching a point with digital cinema technology that the new products are no longer the best products. And in next week's video, we'll be going over some of my favorite onset scopes that I use on every project. I love them so much, I actually have three of them. See you next week.